your white clothes from me. Wear them and you can cover up your shameful nakedness. Buy medicine for your eyes so that you will be able to see. I correct and punish everyone I love. So make up your minds to turn away from your sins. Listen, I am standing and knocking at your door. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll eat together. Everyone who wins the victory will sit with me on my throne just as I won the victory and sat with my father on his throne. If you have ears, listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. It's funny, Laodicea was one of those places that was rich. They were so rich that when disaster came to them at one point in their history, they actually called up Rome and said, we don't need any FEMA assistance. We can take care of ourselves. But the angel says to the community in Laodicea, you are rich in money and possessions, but you don't understand that you're poor in the stuff that God says really matters. Things were really, it turns out, scarce in Laodicea. They had gold and linen and were famous for their eye medicine, but God saw them as poor and naked and unable to see. Parables, I told you before, are sneaky. They have an element that isn't obvious, a hook or a riddle in them. The kingdom of God is like, is the way most of the parables begin. Because they describe for us the way God's kingdom is in a way we may not have really thought about. They have an element that isn't obvious. Like two weeks ago, when we talked about the sower scattering seeds far and wide and looking for good soil. A reminder to us that we have a responsibility to take the gospel into the whole world. And at the same time, to be prepared to be the kind of soil in which God's word in us would grow quickly and strong. Last week, we talked about the mustard seed. A really small beginning with much greater results, that green sauce that my brother-in-law opened up out of the refrigerator, just the smell of it, just a touch of it, enough to set you on fire. And today, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like a woman who took a measure of yeast, kind of like a sourdough mix, and added it to three measures of flour. Then she let it rise, divided it, and baked it into personal loaves, Kind of like a daily bread. Do you hear the hook? Do you see the riddle? Do you understand the mystery? God is like a woman who makes bread. Three measures of flour and then that yeast mixture. I wish Edgar Hayes was here. I love Edgar. Edgar does the Homer Simpson thing. I don't know if you ever heard him in a sermon. He, he mimics Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson has this thing where he says, duh. I don't know, and I can't do it the way Homer Simpson does it. Edgar does it perfectly. It's kind of like, uh, have you ever have you ever been in a situation where you went, oh my goodness, and you went, duh, like that? Can you all do that? Uh, yeah, you're all smacking yourself in the head. You guys are wonderful. <laughs> Here it is. Who puts a batch of yeast with three measures of dough? Huh? Three measures of flour. What? Do you realize what that is? A batch of yeast and three measures of flour would be ten gallons of dough. She's making a massive amount, an extravagant amount of dough. The kingdom of God is like a woman who decides to be extravagant, to make so much bread that not only can she feed her family, but she can also feed her neighbors. She can feed everyone in the whole village because she has decided that there is no scarcity in her household. Or if there is, it doesn't matter. She's going to rejoice and do the godlike thing and live in abundance instead of fear that somehow there isn't enough. 
The kingdom of God is extravagant, and God invites us to be extravagant, to not worry about scarcity, but to see how God has provided for us, and out of it to use the stewardship that God has set in our hands to feed those around us with God's word and with God's grace to the absolute end of our capacity. We do not live in a kingdom of scarcity. We live in a kingdom, well, we live in the kingdom of God. We live in a place where if you take your dough and make daily bread, there's enough for everyone. Including <coughs> one for each of you to take one home today as a reminder of what you heard from God's word in the two verses we found in Luke. Let's bow our hands. Gracious God Almighty, we thank you for your word which challenges us to think in ways that are beyond expectation and understanding sometimes. The kingdom of God is like a place in our hearts that is extravagant beyond all measure. Let us, O oh God, enter into this kingdom and be these kind of kingdom people. But we ask it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.